Why should I fear when I love you? Surrounded by your love, your everlasting love. Why should I keep what people say? They don't know what you mean to me. No, they don't know what you mean to me. Lord, I know what you mean to me, but I know what you mean to me. Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, wherever you're calling from. Just want us to welcome everyone to today's Bible study. And I want us to just begin by magnifying the name of the Lord. Psalms 103 says, Praise the Lord, my soul. All my being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and do not forget how kind he is. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He keeps me from the grave and blesses me with love and mercy. He fills my life with good things, so that I stay strong and so that I stay young and strong like an eagle. I just want us to register our voices on this altar this moment. I just want us to let Jesus recognize the fact that we are here. Just want us to register our voice this moment to begin to magnify the name of our God, the name of our Father. Just want us to praise Him. I just want us to sing praises to His name. And I don't want us to do it as if, oh, we just have to thank God to start the, the Bible study. Or we just have to say a word of thanksgiving first before we can go into the meeting. I want us to mean what you are, we are saying. I want us to indeed praise our God this moment. I want us to sing praises to Jesus. I want us to say, thank you, Jesus. I know what you're doing for me. I acknowledge that I've come this far because of you. I know what you're doing with me. I know what you're doing through me. I just want us to sing praises to our God even this moment. Lebrand de Kashutiana Maluka Zeketeli Kabran de Kasutiana Zaketeli Kabra de Kosha Payana Kapalia Du Siketia. Father, we bless your name. We've come to sing praises to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mana Shepeli Kazik and Teli Kabra de Kajutila Kapaya do Sementia Ekedeli Kebradia do Shapalia Mano Kuzekitayata Eli Brendia do Siteli Kapalia. We magnify your name, O God. We bless you, Jesus. We exalt your name, Father. We exalt your name, O God. We acknowledge that your mercies have brought us this far. And we've come to say thank you. We've come to sing praises to your name. Thank you, Jesus, for your your mercies for your kindness for keeping us for being with us for the peace that comes with you lord we say thank you Thank you, Jesus. 
la kuzeketi lika bradia no kuzeketi yana ya japa ya tata tabali ya no kuzeketi your daughters have gathered again even this moment to sing praises to you Jesus ya kapali ya dosha pe ya tebeli ya na kazuketi yana elebrendi ya dabali kasuti ya tata tabali kazeketi maneke brendi ya daki za kuti ya ta libredi ya dosha menti ya taka brandi ya dosa kete labali ya damani kazeketi ya na namani ka brandi ya dosi tayete labali ya dosha kate ya tete brandi ya doku seketi ya na labrandi ya dosha tia katabali ya dosa seketi ya na you are wonderful you are worthy oh god you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord ya pande ya do setia na kabra de kosha mali ya deke siketiana thank you jesus thank you father for being gracious for being merciful for loving us for keeping us oh god we sing praises to you we did not take this for granted oh god mani kabra de kesa kuteli mani ajaba ya do ko zekita ya na kabra de kasuti ya ta le prede ko shakateli kabra ya ta palia na manuzi kete yida ta ta brandi ya na manuzi keteli kabra ya da jabali ka sonto loko brodo ko jeket ya ta e ke belia na ka brandi ka sutu yote le belia da ta ta balia mano ko jeket ya ta maniana zeket ya ta ta balia na ka seket ya na libre dia do che paye te 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 petia na mana ka zokotiana we are entering at your gates oh god this evening with tens given and we and, and your courts oh god we praise we've come to sing praises to you oh god we've come to magnify you we've come to exalt your already exalted name we've come to We've come to lift you high, Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. You alone are worthy of every praise that we have to give. Mana kaprate kasuti ya tata blani ya na manu shikente. La bali kasikete ya tete tebeli ya du sekete. We've come to lift you high, Jesus. We've come to lift you high, Yahweh. We've come to bless your name. We've come to bless your name. We've come to bless your name, Jesus. Mana kapalia dusi teye tete belia da kushe kentiana ni brandi kazuko tolo kubundu kushe peyete ya tata tabalia na mani kazike tia tamalia no eke brandi kazuti yo tete tebre dia da balisha katia ta we sing praises to you our God we sing praises to you our Father we bless you Jesus we bless you Jesus your children are grateful your children are grateful your children are grateful your children are grateful thank you Father mana kapratia Ya do ko seket ya tabali ya no shekete. For whom you've been to us, we sing praises to you. For whom you've been to us, we magnify your name. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Katsele ke bredi ya do sheme ya na kapali ya da. We say thank you, O God. We say thank you, our Father. We bless you, mighty Redeemer. We sing praises to you, O God. For in the name of Jesus Christ, we've prayed. Amen. For in Jesus' name, we've prayed. Amen. I just want us to take. One point from Matthew 5 verse 13, which says, You are like salt for the human race, for the old human race. This is the good news version. You are like salt for the old human race. But if salt loses its saltiness, there is no way to make it salty again. It has become worthless. So it is thrown out and people trample on it. Then the New Living Translation says, you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled um, and trampled underfoot as worthless. And I was um, reading this scripture, there, there, was this, there was this thing, this scenario that came to my mind. And it was the fact that, you know, when, when you're making, the way they say that, no matter whatever you put into your soup or your stew, if there is no salt in it, there's this weird taste that comes with it, or there's this like it's very obvious but i want to paint two scenarios for us a case where you actually didn't add you forgot to add salt into your food and it doesn't come out and another case where you actually added salt and maybe it's not like maybe you added little you added like the normal quantity you're supposed to add into your food but then when someone tastes or when you tasted it or when someone else tasted it 
they started to argue with you that you didn't add salt into the into the meal and you and you were so sure you are so sure that you did and you kept saying i added salt i added salt and you and the person isn't like maybe you can taste the salt and the person cannot taste the salt or, and maybe the person is eating on you or something even you that cooks the meal cannot taste the salt can we imagine how frustrating that would be the fact if you didn't add salt at all then you know that oh it was my mistake i didn't add season i didn't add salt that's the reason why it's tasting this funny but then you added salt and you added the like the actual amount of salt you're supposed to add into this meal but then there is no sign of the salt into it it makes you sound crazy when you begin to argue that you actually add salt so this this was the scenario that came to mind when i was reading this it said you are the salt of the earth but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor the prayer point this evening is very very simple it's just to say that father may i not lose that flavor you have given to me there is this there is this there is this um quota that we we as individuals have to bring into the kingdom that now makes it like um a mixture of flavors there's there's this sweetness all around there's there's a part for us to play if if we if we miss out if we don't bring our own flavor into into the into the distance yes god can raise somebody else god can raise somebody else but then everybody needs to bring in their own flavor that's what makes it looks look beautiful taste beautiful or sound beautiful or bring out like a very important result the the prayer point this evening is just father in the name of jesus may i not lose my saltiness may i not lose that flavor that you have put into me to bring to to contribute into your kingdom may i not lose my flavor may i not lose my flavor that's just the prayer point this evening that lord i will not lose my flavor prayers in the name of jesus father in the name of jesus i pray oh god that i will not lose my flavor Le brandia do shepaya nama na kabrandia do leke sekete la bendia tata brandia do sekete yana le brandia do shepaya taka soko tolo kupaya ta le brandia ke zita tila bali ano shekete li kaprande la bali asoti ya tata kapali meni anama nuko broto ko shepe yida tata brandia do mana kapale le brandia na I pray oh God that I and my sisters none of us will lose our flavor oh God. As the bread is provided, the unique flavor that you have put in each and every one of us. Manika pratia do, jabalika pratia do, koseketi ya namalika sekete. We will not become worthless, O God. Mali pratia do, sheyete. We will not lose our relevance, O God. Manika pratia do, shemelia kosekete leke petiana. Langusha pratia do, takabalika sekete. May we not lose our relevance. We will not lose our flavor. Yaka pratia do, shepeyi na namana. Kasekatiata, la kuiteketiata mania kabrade, ekuza mania na kabrade, la rakata kabrade, brade keteketende. Rekete 
we say thank you, O God. Manisha pratia dosi ketiana leke zekete lika pratia tapa lika zokotiata. Thank you, Father, for in the name of Jesus Christ we've prayed. Amen. For in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. 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 Adam Shade, please. Thank you so much, um, Aluchi. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who's here. Um, so, uh, like I mentioned in the in the group chat, if you haven't seen it, please um, grab your prayer journals really quickly. Um, we're going to take some prayers. We've prayed these prayers at the beginning of the month. It's the middle of the month, so we're going to take those prayers again. 
And for those who were here on the first Saturday of this month, we took prayers. Um, we had three prayer requests, that things that three things that we're believing God for, for the month of October. And we're going to stay on them. We're going to pray. Maybe that list has been revised by now. Maybe um, God has already even answered some of them. Um, what we're going to do right now is be intentional. We're going to take those prayers. We're going to use a portion of our time right now to take those prayers. So wherever you are, if you have your prayer journal, if you haven't written them down before, um, you know, three breakthroughs that you want to see by the end of October. So um, please, let's just take the time to, to gather this together um, if you don't have it already. But those of you that do, let's just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's just begin to pray in our prayer language as we build up um, our most holy faith to to actually contend for these prayers, for these breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Shala Branda Pacabamba, Ambratu Velente, a Catez as a Vazante, a Lana Namashe, whenever getting Relegadosha, Pacabanda Pandagadosha, Zali Pupando, Zerambravanta Zibalante, Vacamba Gadosha, and Belegato Celebente Relegado, Rabacatan, Sapo Radegade, Shalisotamba, in Braco Papan, Branda Matam, Branda Gadu, and Bresso Secretaria. Manante. <laughs> Embreco papa pan de Brenegadosha, Zilota la Bacamba Ragadesha Levenenti, Ezeketo Zalicata Azivalanti, Embrasso Talica pan de Brenegadesha, Etu Veleket and Brenegade, Zanico Palia de Valenti, Esvelenti, Esvelenti, Rapapa Catambra Baba Baba, Resso Talico pan de Brenegadesha Levalanti, Embrasso Veleket and Mamaka. Sotaria la macumba de Gadea Salicopandi, Rabacan, Rabacamba, Delicetembe, Recadebe de Gadosha, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so by now you should have your prayer journals. For those who are just joining, we are um, taking up three, we're praying about three things that we want to see. Three breakthroughs that we're hoping to see by the end of October. Three breakthroughs. We pray these prayers at the beginning of the month. We're going to continue to pray them. And, you know, this is the middle of the month. We're checking in. For some of you, you've already seen God move in some of these situations. That's already a breakthrough. Okay? Whenever you see any kind of advancement, that is a breakthrough. You don't have to wait till you get to your promised land to say, Oh, God has broken me through. Every single time you take a step forward, every single time God reveals concerning a matter every single time you're able to say oh this is progress that is in fact a breakthrough so i just want to mention that so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to thank god for the breakthroughs that we have already experienced concerning each of these matters for some of you you might be thinking oh um it feels like the situation is even getting worse as i've prayed that in fact is breakthrough truly um I experienced something like that recently and I, I, please, can we all just stay muted? Thank you very much. Um, I experienced something similar where... I interrupt you, Scotty, know, but uh, Eromina, your video is on, if you can turn that off. Thank you. Um, you know, I'd been praying to God for something and then all of a sudden, it felt like the whole thing was getting worse. And in fact, a, a, a whole bunch of information came out about the whole thing and it, it, it almost it almost broke me, right? And I was like, God, this is such a mess. Why is this happening? And he was like, no, this is progress. Like now you can, now you even have more clarity, you know? 
so sometimes it gets messy and it's very easy for us to complain complain and complain and say god you know didn't you say you know didn't you you know whatever the case is but right now we're going to come to god with thanksgiving we're going to come to god with an intentional thanksgiving and say father i thank you thank you for what you have already done thank you for what you are doing in this matter and for some of you you have actually you you actually have a good report you have a good report and it is clear that it is a good report but we we still need to come back and thank god okay because our thanksgiving could very well be the thing that unlocks the very next level of that breakthrough so we're going to be intentional about it pray in your understanding say father i thank you that this and this happened i don't know everybody's situation but i'm going to be praying for myself and together we are in agreement and we're saying we are people who are grateful to god we are people who will not be complainers we will be people that bring a thanksgiving unto god in spite of what we are looking because we walk by faith and not by sight it's in spite of what dreams we're having in spite of what encounters we may be longing for in spite of what if this our surroundings are saying we are going to say father thank you thank you for how you are moving in these situations so if you are if i have grateful people here who are thankful for what the lord has done let's come up here right now begin to thank the lord for specifically for these three things father thank you i thank you for what you are doing i thank you for wisdom i thank you for revelation i thank you for for advancement no matter how small it may seem father i am grateful let's come off it and begin to pray we are praying in our understanding we pray in tongues but also pray in our understanding and we thank god specifically for what he has done we are not praying vague prayers what are you thankful for come off mute if you are thankful and thank the lord thank the lord specifically for what he has done for all that he has done thank you jesus thank you father i'm grateful i'm grateful for advancement in business i thank you for opening up new territories breaking down walls lifting up ancient gates concerning me father i thank you for divine helpers that you have sent in this season thank you father thank you thank you for staying back the hand of the enemy for uprooting every evil agenda that the enemy had concerning my health father i thank you father i thank you father i thank you for provision lord you have provided everything that i have needed for the projects that i have worked on i am grateful grateful for open doors grateful for favor favor on every side lord you have provided in the midst of what should the enemy expected should be a drought lord you have provided more than enough you have filled my valley with water father i am grateful thank you for good health lord thank you for restoration of my health thank you for Father, that you have given me strength on every side. You have given me peace on every side. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful, Father, for giving me wisdom and help, Lord, in, in, in business, in this new territory that I, you have called me to. Father, I am thankful. Thank you for advancement. Thank you, Lord. I am grateful, Father. It's a, There are only three people praying. I don't know. There are, how many of us on the call? 17 of us on the call please can we come off mute and be thankful to god open your mouth and give thanks give thanks this is an altar where you can drop your thanksgiving and it's we received up in heaven let us give god an intentional thanks today in the name of jesus who has done so much for you you have to tell it all because by your words you are justified by your words you are justified come off mute and give god thanks thank you heavenly father you have been merciful you have been gracious to us oh god we thank you we give you the glory and the praise all adoration be unto you father for everything that you have done especially in these areas of my life lord thank you thank you for advancement and health thank you for advancement in business thank you lord for breaking open lord scrolls ancient scrolls thank you for deliverance that you have already begun in the light in, in my family oh god thank you my in the lives of my loved ones god that i've interceded for thank you father thank you lord thank you thank you holy spirit for your guidance through everything for giving me the right words to say for wisdom for knowledge for understanding father i am grateful father i am grateful i am grateful 
I am grateful, Lord. I am grateful, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, my God. I bless Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm not sure why everybody's muted. It's quite interesting. But please, if you can't come off mute, let's all pray these prayers together. Um, that will... Um, it's for your benefit, okay? It's, it is for your benefit. I know some of us are in noisy, noisy places, but if you can... Just, just actually, just do do that. That'll be helpful. <clears throat> so the second portion of this, we're gonna we have these requests that we've written down. Okay, we're gonna follow the pattern of Jesus as he laid out, teaching us how to pray and how he himself prayed. And we're gonna start these prayers by saying, "Father, I'm surrendering my will, not your will." Not my will, rather, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. And let me explain this a little bit because sometimes we are afraid to take these types of prayers to say, Lord, not not my will, but yours, because we think it's going to end in tragedy. We think that it is going to end in one direction that we never expected. But here's the thing. Time and time again, I can come and testify and say that truly the Lord's will is always best. And I'm not saying that because it sounds cute, we can put that on a t-shirt and call it a day. But it's because it's true. It's because it is true. I heard someone say one time, like, you know, sometimes God doesn't give us what we ask for, but he gives us what we need instead. And wouldn't you rather have what you need? Because we are limited in our understanding. We don't see the full picture. In fact, we are asking for 10 cups of something and God is like, I'm giving, I'm, I'm trying to give you hundred and I'm trying to give you hundred cups that the devil cannot take away from you. So you might be asking God for financial provision and financial breakthrough, which is a very common prayer, but God is saying, no, I need to deliver you first. I need you to build your altar. So what I'm going to give you is an anointing for prayer so that you can dismantle the evil altars in your family. So that when I do bless you with finances, because that's an easy thing for God. When I do bless you that those evil altars do not come and snatch away your blessing. The same thing, you're believing God for a child, perhaps. And God is saying, look, with the spirit of infirmity that has been given legal access to your family, if I give you a child, it will come for that child. So I want to make sure that you are in right standing, that you have the capacity and you have the, 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 the altar, the righteous altar to displace every such thing. Do you get my drift? Same thing, you're believing God for a spouse. And, and there's somebody that you even have in mind and God's saying, no, that's not who it is. And then he gives you some something even better. And it, the list goes on and on. So where, when you are praying this prayer, understand that we are praying to a loving father. We are praying to a loving father who actually cares. He cares about every, like it, the Bible says he has counted the, the, the hairs on your head. I love my child to, <laughs> and I will give up my life for my child, but I have not counted the hairs on her head. So if our Heavenly Father has counted the hairs on her, imagine him listening to your prayers today and you're surrendering your will and you're like, Daddy, I don't know anything, but I need your help. That's exactly what this prayer is saying. I'm, I'm admitting that I am limited. I'm just a child compared to your wisdom. I know nothing. So I am saying today, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done here in my life, here on earth as it is in heaven. Are we ready to surrender our will right now in exchange for the Father's will? Let's come off mute and begin to pray. And we're going to say as a chorus, as one body in agreement, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Father, not my will, but yours be done. Let's come off mute and say this. Not mm. my will, but yours be done. Not, not my God. will, but yours be done. Let your will be done in my life. Let your will be done concerning these matters. Let your will be done concerning my family, concerning my business, concerning my destiny, concerning my children, concerning my spouses. Thank you, Father. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, I surrender my will. I surrender my thoughts and my feelings. I surrender everything 
single thing. Not my will, but yours be done. If in the name of Jesus, let your will be established here on earth as it is in heaven. Here on earth as it is in heaven. Father, I surrender my will. I surrender my thoughts and my feelings and everything that I think I know. I surrender the knowledge I think I have. And I ask, Lord, that you replace the knowledge I have with your wisdom, Lord. Not my will, but yours be done. Concerning business, concerning concerning everything that concerns me father oh lord let not my will come in in the way of your will for my life let it be established here on earth as it is in heaven just as you have planned lord everything that you have spoken concerning me let that be what comes to pass i refuse to exist my will i refuse to insist on my way lord father you have given me a choice and today i choose you i choose your way i choose your method I choose your wisdom. I choose your understanding. I choose whatever you have chosen for me, O God. In the name of Jesus. Elana na makho abavante balegedo rada da basetheli embredegede shale zavante Father would you reveal your will concerning these matters reveal your will concerning these matters Lord in the name of Jesus reveal your will concerning these matters unto me as as you, as you see fit Father expand my understanding give me wisdom teach me how to pray teach me what to do Lord but let it be according to your will according to your standard in the name of Jesus not my will but yours be done in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen 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 and finally we're going to do something because um the bible says the powers of life and death are in, are in the tongue what we say concerning a thing matters what we say the words that we we choose concerning a thing matters what we say concerning a thing matters so what we're going to do right now is we're going to make a de- we're going to make declarations We're going to make declarations right now um, concerning these prayer points, these three things that we're believing God for. Um, and this is not just, see, we're not just, these are not affirmations. These are not just statements that we're making. The Bible says that in the mouth of a king, there is power. And the Bible says that we have been made priests and kings through Christ Jesus. So truly, whatever you say concerning a matter, it shall be established. It shall be established according to your words, right? So um, it's time for us to do that. Let us say what we want to say concerning these issues. Let us say what we want to see concerning these issues according to the standard of God, according to the standard of scripture. That is exactly what we're going to do right now. So I know we love to pray in tongues, but please let's say this in our understanding that whatever it is, let's say it's concerning your business in the name of Jesus, according to your word. And you quote the scripture. You said, wherever my foot touches it belongs to me i take authority so therefore my business expands i gain new territory things like that i want us to be intentional so whatever the case is if it's sickness we know the scriptures to quote if it is um you know believing god for one thing or the other we know that there is scripture for everything so we're going to make those declarations right now and speak life over every single prayer request that you have laid on this altar today that we are believing god for because that is where we speak. we begin to see things shift in our lives in the name of Jesus. So if you're at a loss for what you can pray in tongues and as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance, declare, declare, declare life over these situations in the name of Jesus. Now let's come off me and begin to do this in Jesus' name. 
La prando se veli katande brali fakande brali akatoja. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that life, life, and life for abundance over every cell in my body. That every single thing that is not functioning according to the standard of Christ, it begins to give way in the name of Jesus. It begins to function according to the standard of Christ. I claim my healing according to the scripture that said, "By His stripes I am healed." So every Everything that is not working optimally in my body, it gives way. It begins to live, live according to the standard. Live according to the standard that Christ has made available for me. I plead the blood of Jesus over every vessel in my body, over every cell in my body, everything that my Heavenly Father has not planted, any parasite, whatever it may be, that has made its way into my body, it gives way in the name of Jesus. It is uprooted in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I Lord, is rolling upon me, O God. That everywhere that I is mine to take territory. So right now I decree and declare that in business I am fruitful and I multiply. I grow, I grow from the north to the east to the west and to the, even to the south. I grow, I expand everywhere that I, I step in. It is mine to take it. I do not beg, I do not borrow because I am a king in the name of Jesus. Everything that I need has been provided for because the Lord is my shepherd. So every resource that I need for this new business, oh God Almighty, it has been provided. It has been made available. I do not beg. I do not have to worry about where I'm going to get one thing or the other. The, the resources that I need, the people, the places that I need to go, the advice, the knowledge, the wisdom, it has been made available in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that this time is set for deliverance for my brother has come I will see his deliverance in the name of Jesus, the hand of God rests upon him and the words that he has spoken to renounce evil and, and, and all the demonic covenants and curses of his life they, they begin to speak right now, those words begin to bear fruit in the name of Jesus every demon begins to leave his eyes are open, he, just like the prodigal son, he comes to himself in the name of Jesus Jesus, in the name of Jesus, yes, I come with my praise and my thanksgiving concerning these matters, for the Lord has established it. Who can shut a door that the Lord has opened? Who can open a door that the Lord has shut? When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. Father, I thank you for your yes. I even thank you for the doors that you have shut. I thank you for the doors that you have opened, for the ancient gates that you have opened. Oh, I thank you for helpers, divine helpers on every side especially in business. I thank you, Father, that I will deliver my baby safely. In the name of Jesus, my health begins to function optimally. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you. I thank you because you have done these things. Father, I thank you for the rich promises that I have in your word, and your word never fails. Lord, I thank you. Father, I thank you, and I give you praise. I give you glory. I worship you. Let's just begin to thank God. Thank God. Father, we thank you. thank you. Thank you for increase. Thank you for advancement. Thank you for breakthrough on every side. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory. We worship and we exalt your holy name. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Father, we are grateful, we are grateful for the prayers that have come up to you, Lord, today on this altar. We are thankful that you have heard every single one of them. As we prayed in the beginning, let your will be done and let your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we ask that you have your way. Give us wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Send help, Father, on every side. Let your angels be released to, to put to work these words that we have spoken to bring back forth a manifestation of the de declarations that have been made on this altar today father we thank you we ask lord that you continue to strengthen us that we will not give up until we see the manifestation that we are hoping for thank you heavenly father and it is in jesus name that we pray amen 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 amen, amen. amen. Okay, so before I hand over to Minister Amy, um, 
we actually have quite a bit of a fun exercise today. Um, if you're like me, listen, I don't, I've always been a very, <laughs> very practical person in terms of, you know, put me, don't put me in a classroom, put me in a laboratory, right? I don't do science, but you know, you get what I'm saying. Um, give me something to do, right? I need practical, um, application of the things that I've learned. And so uh, myself and Minister Amy were chatting earlier today and we were just like, yep, today is the day we're doing this. It's going to be an exciting time. I think every single one of you here, for those who actually have the ability to concentrate um, wherever you are, and if, if, you know, if you really can just take a moment to sit down and do the practicals, the practicals will start in probably about 50, maybe 10, 15 minutes. But I'm going to give a quick charge so that you just to give you understanding of why we're doing this. Um, so it's it's basically like a, a prayer practicum, I will call it. Um, I gave the example to Minister Ebi of you know home economics. It was actually one of my favorite um, classes to take in you know secondary school because. I love cooking. I actually really, really love it. But, you know, you're sitting in class and they're telling you, oh, what's the formula for baking cake? And I, for the life of me, I'm just like, okay, you do this, you do that. But it, it didn't, it, it can never come together for me in my mind. And, but you put me in the kitchen, I'll just do it. I just know how to do it, right? Because that's, that's how I learn. And I think most people learn that way. You can talk all day long, but unless you actually put your hands to the plow and do, and do the work, then it doesn't really fully make sense to you. You cannot really, you really have to taste and see like the Bible says, right? Like you need to taste and see. So what we're going to do today is in the area, it's in prayer, but specifically in the area of making declarations and engaging scripture in a very intentional and meaningful way that produces results that actually produces results and i i love to share this because it's so fresh and real in my life today um that i have to share with you like to give you context as to what i'm really talking about here i'd always heard oh you need to speak the word of god and you need to do all these things and that's how you know things are going to work for you and so i used to do that like when i'm reading the bible and i see oh something stands out to me or a, a promise is called out to me i'll declare it and that's it you know sometimes i'll write it in my prayer journal um, but there was no system, so to speak. It was not as intentional as it ought to be. And so the Holy Spirit, in his loving kindness, sent me to a prayer group, right? There's a 6 a.m. prayer by Dominion City Church here in Atlanta. So, you know, many of you know that church, very good praying group and all of that. So I just joined. My friend invited me and I just joined. And I, I, and I started praying the way that you know, she had instructed. Now I had learned that, that this was how to pray. We teach this here in King's Arrow and the tribe. Like we teach, this is how you're supposed to pray. But I had never really been in a group that practiced it the way that they did. So I just started doing it. And one thing that they would do every single day, every, I'm telling every single day is there were these nine declarations. Okay. Nine declarations we will make. They're biblically based by the way, Declarations and affirmations, not the same thing. Declarations are from the mouth of a king. I don't know kings that affirm what other people say. Affirmations are rooted in something else and the source matters. So if you're somebody that is on here and you do affirmations, please stop. <laughs> please don't do that. Affirmations are not, that's new age stuff. That is, that's called manifesting. And um, you definitely don't want to be messing with that. It might seem innocent. You'll be like, well, I'm just saying positive things sending positive vibes that's not godly please let's not do that <laughs> if there's anybody here that is prone to doing affirmations please that's not what we're talking about here these are declarations okay in the words of a king there is power so back to that we would do nine declarations every day they're biblically based and every single day we'll say these things and i wrote them down in my journal and i would i would say them and i would mean it and i would just decree in my understanding okay now we are people that pray in tongues we can pray in tongues from now to next year and that is amazing we will never stop preaching praying tongues praying tongues praying tongues but um there is a place 
for making declarations in your understanding. And this is what we want to practice today. Because, you know, the Bible says that the angels wait for the, the, the words that we are speaking, right? You know, there, there's a place for that. They pick up those words and they work with it. We are judged by our words. So all of heaven, earth, and even hell is waiting for what the sons of God are going to say. What are we saying with our mouth? okay it's okay to speak in tongues but here's the thing when we're praying in the holy spirit a lot of times we don't fully know because the bible says we are limited in our thoughts right so we don't fully even understand what the holy spirit is praying through us sometimes okay and we just lose focus and we just do that for an hour 30 minutes sometimes we do but then we're not writing it down we're not bringing it to a place where it can really work for us so it's almost like we run the race but we don't get to the finish line that's the best way i can put it okay so running is great you get exercise but you only get the prize when you cross the finish line does that make sense so in, in this case doing these declarations every single day i realized something that because my ears were hearing it as my mouth was saying it there was something in my subconscious that shifted and it continued to shift and shift but the crazy thing about it was how i was seeing these things actually play out in my life i was like i'm sorry what <laughs> it was it was like film trick that's the best way I, you know what, what what film trick means right she's like this cannot be real and i was just seeing it like happen so quickly and so and i was like wait a, just wait a hot second because are you telling me that this whole time i could have just been doing this and I'm not saying it is the one size, like the only thing that can ever, you know, fix all your, it's not like going to fix all your problems in life, right? But it is a major key that we are missing out on practicing as a body and definitely us as a group. And because we are sisters, as we are learning, we teach each other and then we grow from there, right? So that's what we're going to learn today. That's what we're going to practically do today. And Minister Amy has put together some materials for us to engage with so we can see the template like hey this is how we should be praying yes we pray in tongues and we read our word but this is how it all comes together there's a place for sitting and listening even in the midst of praying in tongues so if you're having one hour of praying in tongues and you pray in tongues for a stretch of one hour you don't take a break you don't write anything down you've just been talking for an hour there is power in pausing and listening to what Holy Spirit is saying, writing it down, because it needs to make sense to you. Now, I'll give you an example, because sometimes we overcomplicate these things. Um, I was, I was having some frustration with, um, you know, business. I, I was like trying to figure something out, and this thing for life with me, I was like, I was about to pull my hair out because I was so frustrated. I was like, I need help, and. So during one of these prayer meetings, I just, I was praying, you know, they were like praying in tongues and then write your goals and, and then, you know, whatever the Holy Spirit tells you, write it down. At some point in the midst of praying in tongues, I had to shut up and listen to what Holy Spirit was saying. He said, do this, this, and this. So I wrote it down. Now to me, it sounded so simple. I'm like, am I really hearing the Holy Spirit? But I said, mm, let me just write it down because the instruction seems so simple. I kid you not. I follow those exact instructions within 24 hours. The issue, in fact, within 12 hours, because it happened the same day, because I prayed this prayer at 6 a.m. I followed the instructions and within 12 hours, that matter was resolved. Right? So you don't just have the declaration part. You also then have the part where you receive instruction and guidance. Okay? For practical things that you're dealing with. And you don't know, you're like, I don't know where this came from. Just write it down write it down so that's really what we want to do that's what we want to eventually like really bring into our prayer practice moving forward but today we're going to have a bit of a stretch minister amy is going to give us a charge as well and guide us through how to pray efficiently so that we begin to actually see those results okay because sometimes it can be, it can get very tiring when we're praying 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 you're like oh i pray for three hours i pray for seven hours i pray for ten hours and then at the end of it you're like but what did i get out of it beyond i mean i'm not saying that it's a waste of time please don't hear that but is it the most efficient use of time if we don't take a moment to actually listen and receive because prayer is a two-way street right it's communication with god not just us um 
muttering things okay so i just wanted to give that context i'm going to hand it over to minister amy now but before i do that if you do not have your prayer journal with you you can write on your notes if possible you know your notes on your phone whatever you can take to write if you don't have that that's fine it's the first class you know but m- subsequently you know our prayer meetings moving forward we're going to be doing these and it'll be different themes at different times so please just keep that in mind but um now i'm gonna add um, hand it over to minister amy because she can definitely articulate a lot of this better than i can but i she had asked me to just share this because sometimes you might need to hear from somebody else like hey by the way this stuff works it works and it works really well Uh um yeah so over to you boss (laughs) wow okay um um okay (laughs) that's an interesting one (laughs) but thank you so much shadi thank you very much oluji for the prayers and thank you for just um you know kind of opening us up in this direction today uh shadi i'm going to do my best to go through the charge quickly because i want us to at least practice it but the thing is even if we only get to um practice it for a few minutes i I think because shadi and i had talked about this and we understood the importance of this but you know as i prepared i i found that it'll be necessary for me to sort of um lay the the right foundation right i don't want us to just jump into this thing and just you know begin to uh to do it i want to make sure that we've you know furnished proper understanding um of what we're doing right so please stay present. Definitely we will find time. I'm going to try by the mercies of God to wrap this thing up that I'm doing as a charge within about 20 minutes or so. And then we just actually go into um, practical, uh, the practical aspect of this. So please be present. Please, you know, stay here um, as we, as we go through this. So uh, I don't think we have much time for our announcements. I think it's important that I just jump into the agenda for today. But again, thank you everyone for joining. God bless you. I know that God is going to speak to you and this is going to be a powerful time in his presence for you specifically. So please um, stay present. Let your spirit be uh, be here. Um, So Father, in the name of Jesus, um, we thank you for today. We thank you and I give you all the glory for this opportunity to speak to your people. I thank you for this opportunity to bring your word, Lord. Your word is life, your word is spirit. And so I ask, Lord, that even as I speak, as you give me utterance, that you furnish understanding in the minds of people. I ask that you bring about the transformation that you desire in our lives. I thank you because you have brought this word at such a time as this, because you are indeed visiting your people very specifically, even in this season. So I ask, Lord, that as I speak, there be no interruption, there be no interference from my vessel, that I just be a channel for the words that the Lord wants to communicate to his people today. Let this word words come very clear and let understanding be received even instantly as the words are heard today in jesus name we pray amen 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 and lord i take charge of this altar i arrest every distracting spirit every confusing spirit um nobody will miss their word today in jesus name we pray amen okay Amen. so Um, You know, I was going to just do like a short charge here, but I find that it might be important that we just do this thing um, properly and just kind of have this teaching for people to reference if need be. So I encourage anyone who's able to log on to YouTube to do that. I think it's working fine. It looks like everything is fine, the audio, the video and all of that. But so um, Shade already kind of gave the introduction of what we're going to be doing today. And if I had to title it, I would say that this is going to be a a session a teaching if you will on praying in your understanding and i find this important because i know that especially maybe in like you know more recent years like we have a huge emphasis on praying in tongues and you should know this right now that you will not find me (laughs) not praying in tongues okay so this is not a teaching to say that you know praying in tongues is not what you need to do and all of that no um because i will always pray in tongues And I like that scripture even like establishes that Paul was talking to the people and he had to pause, you know, maybe because of like such a situation where people start to assume what you're saying or what you're not saying. And it says, I thank God that I pray in tongues more than you all, right? Like, so don't even come for me. Don't come at me, you know, as I begin to tell you what I'm telling you. And I'm saying the same thing, maybe not more than you all, but you get the point. I pray in tongues. Um, I know we have some fiery uh prayer leaders and intercessors here so uh the point is i do pray in tongues right but today i want us to look at something that i think many of us haven't really fully grasped and some of us have actually kind of gotten away from it 
in a sense, um, not because we even knew it fully, but because we didn't know it enough. And because there seemed to be like kind of an escape, if you will, if I put it that way, um, we never really mastered this piece of praying. So I trust God for grace to communicate what, you know, he will have us like learn and know and hear today as far as this topic is concerned. And I trust that there will truly be transformation in your life. Now, as Shadow was saying, this is something that, you know, I do. This is something that I've done for years. And I find that I share, like I, you know, kind of give snippets. I say this here and there, but I feel that people don't really kind of grasp it. People don't really understand it. And part of it is because there's also not a good basis or a good base. Let me put it that way, that people are working off of. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about maximizing your time with the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about maximizing prayer. I'm talking about knowing how to pray properly in your understanding. I'm talking about maximizing prophetic words. Now, as we started this month, the Lord gave a word to us and said, you know, this is a uh, month of visitation. And to be quite honest, it's really been that. If I like, if I look at the like previous months in my life and I look at this, I know for a fact that it was the word from the Lord because this has been that month for me. Okay. And we're not, we're just like a little past the midpoint of the month. Right. Um, but it, it was just weighing on my heart that it would not be okay if this month comes by and all people here are able to do is just say, yeah, the Lord has said it's my month of visitation. And maybe they come to the end of this month and they can't point to some things that have happened in their life. They haven't, you know, they haven't uh, been able to step into certain things. They can't point to certain things and say, okay, this is what happened. And if that may be you or, you know, you, you're feeling that way, just know that this meeting, this teaching itself is your visitation. So if you don't have many other visitation, um, let's say, um, uh, evidences um, that you can point to. This one is a, a visitation because I feel like it will truly shift the way many of us um, uh, uh, approach prayer and naturally that changes the trajectory of your life, right? So um, let me just begin with scripture. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, very popular scripture. And I'll just begin um, from 9. Um, this is when the disciples of Jesus asked him to teach them to pray. And I've said it before is because when it comes to prayer, you actually ought to learn it. So many of us would say, oh yeah, I just, you know, it just naturally comes to me. Mm -mm. If these men came to a point where they were saying, you know, teach us to pray. It's not because these were people who didn't like God. It's not because, um, you know, they didn't care about God. It's, it's not because of that. It's because they realized that hmm, it is possible that there is something about the way Jesus is praying that like maybe we haven't grasped. Maybe we, you know, don't understand. And maybe we should just ask him outright to teach us, right? And so he begins, he says, after this manner, therefore pray ye. So it's not saying that these are the words, right? Because <clears throat> I know many of us grew up to, you know, in, in uh, environments where like, you know, when we had to pray, we'd pray this and say, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name and all of that. But he was saying, after this manner, pray ye. It said, father, um, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But then the next verse that comes says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is so important. This is where I'm going to park today because this is our focus. So you see that Jesus went through this process of prayer almost as, you know, like going through the first um, portion of it, which is naturally giving God thanks, hallowing his name, um, acknowledging him, you know, for who he is. And But the next thing that is primary is that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So essentially, one of the goals of prayer, because we know that there are other things that were in this template that Jesus gave, is to bring people to a point where they are able to, uh, would I say, draw down God's will from heaven into the earth. That's it. You see, this is important because many times we think that prayer is a time for us to establish our will here on earth. But you don't see that here. And this is one thing that's really important to note so that you understand how to pray and you don't start questioning the prayers that you're making. So I'm glad that Chade had, you know, led us into that prayer and said, you know, um, 
uh, you know, not our will, but yours, Lord, right? Because this is the basis of many things. You see, so many of us get into a place where we're praying prayer points and we pray from the beginning of the year till the end and it doesn't happen. And we come out of that year and we're like a little frustrated with God, even though we won't actually say it to God, right? Because we, we, you know, we just know better than to, you know, be like, God, why would you, you know? But we do feel that frustration with God because it's like, why didn't this happen? But you have to acknowledge that the first thing that's important here as far as praying things and asking for things to be done is that you're actually within the context, within the scope of God's will. So he says, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This is important because if we don't, if we don't understand that this is part of what we do in prayer, we will do many things. We will say many things and we would even pray in tongues for long and not get much out of it. You see, the thing is this, is that the gift of tongues is really so rich and so robust. So please don't misunderstand me and think that like it doesn't serve any purpose. It does. I've taught this here. I tell you that part of what you even do when you pray in tongues, especially when you pray in tongues for long, is that you are generating that power. You are stirring up that gift, that resource within you that translates to the power that you see at work in your life that is achieving things. But the question is, how do we ensure that God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. And I want to bring us to Psalms chapter 103 and verse 20. It says here in Psalm 103 and verse 20, it says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word. And I, I say it here a lot. It doesn't say hearkening unto um, the word. It says, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So here you can see that the agenda, the assignment, right? The task that angels have is to do what God has said. But the thing is, it is not just that that is God's word. It is the fact that there is a voice here on the earth that releases that word and gives it permission to be established here. So the angels, they know what God said. That's not the issue. They're very clear on what God said. That's not where they are confused. That's not where they are held up. They are here to perform his word. They are here to hearken um, uh, unto his word, unto his commandments. But the piece that we cannot neglect is that they are also hearkening unto the voice of his word. That is the people who give voice to the word of God. So the reason I share that is that when we come here and we say things like, oh, there's been a prophetic word that's come from God, many of us take that word and we're like, I receive it. It's not a matter of receiving. It's not a, an escape. It's not a, a pathway into uh, uh, absorbing yourself of work or anything. When the prophetic word comes, when the word comes from God, maybe even God highlights something to you from the pages of the Bible. The idea is that when God speaks a word, and like I said last week, you can build there. But you don't build by saying, oh, I have a building. I receive a building. Oh, the building. You know, that's not how you, like, oh, you're just walking around and they're like, oh, what's going on? Oh, I have a building. Oh, you're not doing anything. And you're just like, oh, I, that's not how it works. Because the word of God, it, it can be described as, you know, this, this is even in um, Psalms, actually, 19 and verse 10. It says, it's like treasure. It's like, it's sweeter than the honeycomb. This is what the Bible is saying of the decrees of the Lord. It said the judgments of the Lord, the decrees of the Lord. That is what the Lord says. And it describes it as treasures that are hidden deep down. The reality is that when God speaks, when there's a prophetic word that comes from God, that is the reason that there are people here that he requires to release those words. So when we come here and we say these things, it is because we need to complete that circuit. God will say something. God will already determine something in the heavens. That is his will over there. But that will also needs to be birthed here in the earth. It needs to be allowed to come in here because God already willed the earth to men. So if God is doing something so powerful in the heavens and he cannot find men who can speak them into being, you will find that things will remain the same. And if you think I'm lying, look in Hebrews chapter uh, 11 and verse 3. It says, 
through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. It was framed by the word of God. When I tell you that the word of God is, is powerful, enough, I can tell you that the word of God is enough. You don't have to add to, you don't have to, it is enough. But the question is, what do you do when that word comes? This is why the emphasis today is how you can pray in your understanding. Because for some of us, we haven't developed this ability. We haven't developed this. And it feels like as though, you know, speaking in tongues was an easy, easy out. Like I don't have to learn how to pray. I can just stay here and pray in tongues and know that I've prayed and I've left. You are sure changing yourself. You are leaving a lot on the table, as we say in uh, uh, in, in this uh, space, in, in the business world. You are leaving a lot on the table. Because, you know, the funny thing is many times when the word of God comes, it might come as one word. You can just hear visitation. You can just hear deliverance. You can just hear um, open doors. But the question is, what context does it take? How does it apply? Where can I use it? How can I apply it? So we must become people who understand how to handle the word of the Lord. People who know how to handle it. So it is great that we pray in tongues and all of that. But you see, scripture says in Matthew 12, 12 and uh, verse 33. And this was a couple of days ago when I was like working on this path that the Holy Spirit brought it to my knowledge, just popped it in my mind. You know, the Bible says, by your words, you are justified. It said, by your words. By your words. By your words. Not by your tongues. Please do not mishear me. Tongues are valid. When you speak in tongues, you will move mountains. You will cast out devils. Okay? You will make great advancement in life. But I'm saying that there's a place for the words as well that you speak. There's a place for the words that you speak. And this is an area many of us don't spend time. And as I looked at my life and as I looked at the things that like, you know, practices that I, 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 I keep, I found that hmm, I can admit that maybe I haven't really like shared it in like great detail and maybe like emphasized it and shared it and all of that. Because there are ways that you pray that ensure that you are not living there. You just prayed two hours and you can't. So many of us will say things like, oh, I don't hear the voice of God. You see, we are waiting for that voice of God that will thunder. We don't learn to master the voice of God in small things, in the regular, in the simple things. Now, I'm going to shift into more of a practical description of how this works. I'm just trusting God to help us uh, communicate what needs to be said today, okay? I'm just trying to take a page out of my prayer time. I hope that is okay with us. Because I think, like Shade said, this needs to be taught on a practical level so people know how to use it, how to engage it. So earlier this week, I had sent out some notes to the group, and this was based on the emphasis that came from the Holy Spirit that said, quick understanding. That's what I heard, quick understanding. And obviously, I traced it to scripture. It's right there in scripture, so you'll see it if you look for it. Talking about um, the Spirit of God um, was upon him, and he was made of quick understanding. And so for me, I'm like, oh, Father, you know, yes, thank you. I'm made of quick understanding. But as I sat down to pray on that, as I sat down to deal with that word, to handle that word, to, to put myself in that word, the Holy Spirit began to open it up, open it up, open it up. And that's how we ended up with seven pages of the prayers that I sent to you. I'm saying that as a people, we have to learn to pray in our understanding in this way. So you sit down with that word that says that, you know, um, you are made of quick understanding. And what some of us end up doing can be best described as a chance. Oh, I decree that I'm made of quick understanding. I'm made of quick understanding. Made, that's not how it works. You have to sit down till that word of God becomes personal to you. till it becomes crystallized for you so that you can get the, the, the pillars, the building blocks. Because what it is, is when that word comes, there's something God is looking to achieve. He's not sending it as just like, oh, because the Bible makes it clear. It says his word will not return to him void it's supposed to accomplish something he does not expect that word to come back void he doesn't expect that word to come back without results so he's saying it because there's something it needs to be he needs to achieve but the question is how well are you partnering with that word how well are you utilizing that word to ensure that what god is looking to build is actually built in your life and in your context 
this is why we do this this is the essence of this um quick charge today so when we talk about praying your understanding one of the things that keeps people from being able to properly do this is because they don't have a solid base in the word of god and sometimes if we tell people to pray in their understanding, they're just reading off things from their desire. They're reading off things from their mind. They're just saying things based on how they feel. And that's not how to be strategic. That's not how to be a wise master builder. You have to be building on that word. That is the foundation. That is the thing that you've been given. You have to understand how to gather the elements, how to gather the, uh, the, the parts of it that you require. So the thing is this, is that when a word like being made of quick understanding comes, the reality is that as a group of people, it may mean different things to everybody. But what you do is that you sit down with God when that word comes. I'm just trying to give like practical uh, example of how you do something like this. You sit down with that word and you begin to pray in tongues. You begin to pray in tongues. And that's the word that's in your heart. Some of us, what is in our mind when we're praying in tongues is when we need to go and make soup, when we need to go and, you know, we're in different places. So that's why we don't, we don't hear much. We don't maximize these things, but you sit down with God and that word is in your heart. I made of quick understanding. And as you sit there, you begin to hear the Holy Spirit. Many of us don't expect that we will hear the Holy Spirit. And it's the reason why we don't. And maybe it's because we also expect that it's going to come with something dramatic. It's going to come with something elaborate. That's why we miss it. Chade was giving an example of dealing with an issue. She sat down, she was praying and she was wondering, how can I figure this out? How can I get through this? And she hears three things that she needs to do. You see, the thing is that many of us, when we hear that, we say, oh, it's my mind and all of that. You, you think that you hear the Holy Spirit when it's word of knowledge. You are waiting to hear the voice of God at the word of knowledge level. That's, oh, I, there's somebody I can't see. No, you learn it from the basic, this is where it starts from. You, you learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in this, this kind of matters. When you're sitting down praying and he's telling you something simple. So you sit down with a word like being made of quick understanding and now the Holy Spirit begins to distill it to you. Show you how it applies in your context. And so we come up with that and say, okay, the Spirit you know, um, of the Lord uh, shall rest upon him and shall make him of quick understanding. And now the Holy Spirit begins to connect other scriptures other scriptures that are related to it to you. This is something that I practice. This is something that I do, but I, I don't think I took the time to actually teach it because I, and I don't want to, you know, be guilty of not like showing you all, you know, how to do things. I want to make sure that on that note, it will be said that I, you know, I did my part. So this is how I, I do it. I've told you, if you are going to your prayer time and you don't have a notepad, come on, why? That is valuable stuff that you are losing. That's valuable stuff that you are losing. Why do you think it must be some loud? These are little things that will filter into your mind as you are praying. You have to have somewhere that you are documenting it. So whether it's your phone you take, if you ha have enough discipline to not be distracted, or if it's a piece of paper or like a notepad, something that you have to document things, this is what you must do. Because as you begin to pray in tongues, as you begin to pray in tongues, your understanding, yes, it's not fruitful in the beginning. But as you do it, you are opening a channel. You are opening a channel. You are breaking that barrier between soul and spirit. And so things begin to flow into your mind, which is a component of your soul. As you are praying in tongues, you are actually hearing the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible lets us know that, you know, he that is joined with, with, uh, with God is, is one spirit. So you are sitting there thinking, oh, it's just my mind. Oh, it came from my mind. At that point in time, you are flowing at the frequency of the Holy Spirit because he's mingled with your spirit. And as you pray in tongues over that word, the door opens between the chambers of your soul and your spirit. And now things begin to flow into your soul from there. Things that you need to keep, you need to document. So this document that I came up, it wasn't just because I just thought of nice things. No, it's because the door opened. 
and the holy spirit began to breathe began to brood on it began to expand it began to build it and then i started to write i started to write and all of these things you might take them and begin to speak them over your lives and they will be good but i'm telling you that this is only a base point like this is just a starting point because if you sit with the holy spirit on a word of this nature there are things he's going to say to you there are some of these things that i didn't even share with you all because those things are more related to me but i'm saying that these things were built off of the word if you take all these prayers that i sent to you and you begin to pray them in your understanding you can actually stay here and pray this thing in understanding for an hour and it'll continue to generate like more will continue to be generated and that's something you have to keep in mind because you have to learn how to start building strategically you build where god is building many of us it's not that we don't want to build it's not that we're not trying to build but we're building in a place where god is not even he's not he's not working on on that that thing right at this moment the best way to ensure that you are making good progress is that you are building exactly where god is building so when god says this is a month of visitation and he highlights the fact that you need to be of quick understanding you stay there and build with god you stay there and build right there so these are the prayers that i've been praying and i'm telling you it, it continues to expand it continues to build because the more i pray the more i say it the more things open up in my life the more i receive even more insight from the holy spirit like okay add this one into it put this scripture there build like this and then you begin to say it, you begin to speak it back to yourself these are not affirmations these are declarations this is the word of god god is not a talkative that he will now when he's given a prophetic word he's not saying no he might just give you one word that's it you will sit with the Holy Spirit so that it continues to expand so that you can, you can, so you can build properly around that word. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. I, I really hope what I'm saying here is making sense. So that when you come to pray in your understanding, you, you don't, you're not so, Father, I thank you for making me of quick understanding. And you're done in two minutes. You don't know what else to say. You gather the right scriptures. You gather the relevant yeah. scriptures. Sit there. Thank you very much. Can, can everybody please stay muted? Um, Susan. Okay, let me show you. You begin to gather, you begin to gather all of these scriptures. And then you build it. So when you're praying it, listen, even your understanding is participating with you. You know, I feel that for some of us, the reason why maybe we don't get as much, we don't draw as much from our prayer time is that indeed we do not let our understanding have any aspect or any, any involvement in any of it. So as much as God wants to speak to you, you shut off, the, you close that door, you hold it, you get it, that let, let my mind not be part of this thing. So you can't even hear anything and nothing comes to you. So this is a practical class today. We're going to do it shortly. So I like how Shadi said that. Maybe find a place to sit. I'll tell you the truth. When I do this kind of prayers, a lot of the times I'm sitting down. There's times when I'm walking around and I'm praying. But when I do this kind of prayers, I'm sitting down. I'm just sitting down and I'm praying. Not very loudly. There's a word that God has given me and I'm just praying and I'm praying. And next thing I'm hearing the scripture that's in Isaiah 11, 2 and, 2 and 3. Next thing I hear Daniel 1, 17. Next thing I'm hearing Hebrews 5, 14. Next thing I'm hearing Isaiah 40, 30. And even as I have that, the Holy Spirit begins to build it. You have to learn to give voice to his word. You have to build the right vocabulary around what God is saying. What you are speaking is tongues. What you are hearing is spirit language because spirit language is not English. But you must bring it to a place where you are speaking it and you are hearing what you are saying. Because it's also educating, it's also conditioning your mind. It's conditioning your subconscious. It's conditioning you for what God is doing. So like Shadi said, these are not affirmations. Oh, I'm wonderful. I'm beautiful. I'm loved. I'm. That's fine. But that's not what we're doing. Because I think the question is, what is powering what you're saying? Is it your flesh? Is it the universe? Like some people say, oh, the universe will bring it to me. Or are you partnering with the Holy Spirit so that what he's building can be built here? So now you sit with one word that comes that says you will be made of quick understanding and you have a whole document that you are working off of. You have a whole document that you are using and now you understand that, okay, the Lord told me that the spirit of God shall, uh, of the Lord shall rest upon me and shall make me of quick understanding. So when you go there to pray, some of us, it's just tongues for the next one. Hour, I hear you. It's fine. But I'm saying, let your mind participate in this thing. Let your mind receive instruction. So then you speak, you say the oppression of the spirit of God that makes for quick understanding is active and powerfully at work in me. You speak in the present. 
He said, I make sound decisions swiftly because I'm quick of quick understanding in tough matters and seeming mysteries. That is how you build. Are you following me? Are you understanding what I'm saying? You begin to speak according to that word. Every opportunity that comes my way is fully maximized because of the oppression of the spirit of God within me, making me of quick understanding. You begin to speak along those lines. And like I said, you will receive these uh, 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 prompts from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I love how they have AI speaking about you know, prompt uh, engineering. You receive these prompts, prayer prompts from the Holy Spirit that you declare with your words, you declare with your mouth, giving them permission to find expression in this world based on your specific scenario, because that's what yours will be, uh, will be fashioned after. So for example, you receive a word that says you're of quick understanding. It will mean something for me, different from what it means for you. Maybe for someone where you are needing that help, or what is primary, what is more prominent in your life right now is situations that are surrounding your marriage. So when you begin to pray along those lines, God begins to give you your own words to build with. Not that like, Lord, I make sure that I'm quick understanding in what area, how, to what end, what do you hope to come out of that quick understanding? If, if somebody is following me, please, can you just indicate? Because I know the line is quiet, but we're going to come off mute shortly. We're not going to be so quiet, but please indicate if you're following me. You understand? What is God building? So you can't just say, oh, um, I made of quick understanding. To what end? Is God making me of quick understanding so that my marriage can be saved? So that my marriage can be repaired? Is God making me of quick understanding so that I can understand what to do in my business? Is God making me of quick understanding so that I can course correct in relationships, relationships that I've thrown, you know, I've, I've messed around. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Is God making me of quick understanding so that I know how to maximize the resources of my calling? Is God making me of quick understanding so that I understand the dynamics of the anointing that's at work in my life? You see, some of us, we don't understand that you need to get that specific. Because the Bible says, if we pray according to his will, he hears us. That is his will revealed. I don't know what else you are looking for. That is his will that's revealed. But he wants to make you a quick understanding. So some of you have heard like, oh, okay, uh, there's an anointing for this on your life. Do you even understand? If they ask you, do you understand how your anointing works? You probably don't know. Do you understand how this grace that you, you have, do you understand how it works? You don't know. But this is where God begins to work with you. And so he begins to build those prayers in your understanding that you will speak with your own mouth accordingly. Oh, I made of quick understanding, even in the area of my anointing. So I understand what God is doing per time. I know exactly how he wants me to partner in that moment. I know exactly what he wants me to say. I am of quick understanding, even in the prophetic. So when I see something, I understand what God is saying and I speak accordingly. These are the ways that you, you, just, you, you get what I'm saying. So this is how one person will build your own. Maybe is that I'm of quick understanding. So I understand how to navigate the relationship between myself and my husband because of the, the oppression of the spirit that makes me of quick understanding. I'm able to deflect any negative environment, any negative circumstances and end comes to the, you know, um, uh, maybe conflicts that we have. We understand how to work well with each other. We understand how to speak with each other in love. We understand these are, these are the ways you do it. So maybe in, in, in it's your career that, you know, um, is impacted. Maybe it's in your career that God is visiting you and this word is related to you. You build accordingly. That's what you write. Oh, thank you, Father, for making me of quick understanding. And so therefore, I know what it takes to get to the next level of my career. I'm of quick understanding so I can discern the relationships around me that I need to uh, 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 invest in so that I'm, I'm eligible for this promotion. This is how you, you speak. I'm of quick understanding to understand the key things that are required for my job so that I am set apart even amongst my peers. These are things that you just how you build and you pray in understanding, not just speaking in tongues. Yes, you will speak in tongues, you know, and but you will you make sure that you are giving voice, voice to the word of God. Because, like I said, you may not realize it, it may seem like oh, this is just coming from my intellect, but I'm telling you that what you are getting is you are getting inspiration, you are actually operating in that moment as the prophet over your life. You don't even need somebody to come and say, I you can you sit down there and you begin to decree those things. It's from the word, it's from the Lord. So you are simply giving voice. This is this is prophesying 101. That's prophesying 101. So guess what? News flash. You don't need to come into the meeting for someone to do that for you. Because you could do it by yourself. Now you have a list of these things and you begin to prophesy over yourself. 
you say i'm made able to quickly understand and interpret things the lord shows me so i no longer miss my visitations i no longer miss out on revelation i no longer miss out on encounters so you begin to speak those things accordingly you build so this is what we're doing today is i want us to practice this i have the documents already but i want us to build on it so what we're going to do is we're going to pull up that document victoria is going to have the first one on her on her um on her computer and she'll share with us the first one victoria is from isaiah 11 2 to 3. so this is me just preliminary stuff like this is where you you start from and that scripture says the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him and shall make him of quick understanding so for you what does this mean which areas do you need that quick understanding where have you suffered maybe he's even all of this that's fine write everything begin to build it when i began to put this document together it didn't look like this but as i just dumped everything i dropped everything and as i finished and i got to a certain point then it was clear then it made sense and then i was able to like properly you know categorize them segment them all of that in fact i sent it to shade so before sending it to the group and she's like okay this one can even be and okay fine now we can arrange it this way but does somebody understand what i've been trying to communicate on the altar today i feel that it's important for us to learn how to pray in our understanding because by your words you will be justified so many of us pray in tongues and the, because we don't allow the things of the spirit distill into our soul we don't know what to look out for we don't know what to do when things happen we don't know how to respond to the oppressions of God around us because we don't understand it. We did not allow the oppressions of the Spirit of God, even during that time of prayer, to flow into our minds. I was telling Shade that I feel that I would have cheated people if I don't say, like this is truly how, um, uh, how I, I pray. I'm telling you the truth right now. I can sit down and I'm praying and I'm just praying in tongues. I'm not really sure what the emphasis of God is on that prayer meeting. And the next thing, the Lord starts speaking to me about my business and i can tell you that this is they're not ambitions these are sanctified thoughts from the spirit to me and i will write them down i was telling her that i literally have these documents and i used to you know um uh, would i say not challenge but like require myself to even after i've prayed in tongues and all of that based on these documents that i put together that the holy spirit you know had given to me i will make sure that i'm repeating those things because i did not write those things down by ambition i didn't write it down because of perspire to aspire vision stuff no 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 it was because the holy spirit quickened it in my mind in the place of prayer so i have these things that are in a document that are concerning my life declarations there are these things in a document concerning the family there are these things in a document concerning career there are these things in a document concerning the business and i write it down based on what the holy spirit tells me in the place of prayer i was talking i was telling Shadi, i said just yesterday i sat down and i was praying again quick understanding i have been praying i've been speaking those words i have quick understanding in this i have quick understanding in that and i sit down yesterday to pray and next thing is a blueprint that the holy spirit is downloading and saying this is it write it down one two three four five this is how you're going to go this is what you're going to do and i just captured it really quickly so too many of us go to our, play, our places of prayer without a notepad without anywhere to capture this thing you'll forget it except you're expecting that you don't you're not going to hear the voice of god and maybe that's the reason why you haven't if you go there with a piece of paper you will hear the bible says of the woman who um uh, was saying that, oh, she had nothing else and everything. And then um, the prophet told her that that oil that you have, go and borrow jars, go and borrow vessels. And she started pouring the oil. And it was when she had no jar that the oil stopped. Is it possible that the reason you do not hear the voice of God, is it possible that the reason the Holy Spirit seems to not speak to you is because you actually do not go there with anything to take down what he's saying? Because just the way the water, the sorry, the oil stopped because there were no more jars. That's likely the way the flow, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit stops because you have nowhere to store it. You have nowhere to keep it. Don't sit there and say, oh, I don't know if it's my mind. You put it down first. The Holy Spirit, if you have put anything there that came from him, he will make it clear. You will clear your doubts. You just write it there. But you have to believe that God is speaking to you in this way. It is when you master that voice of God in this way. When God is telling, okay, somebody there has come, you are waiting till your voice, your your the way you hear God is word of knowledge. This this is this, sit down there. That thing that He's telling you when you're praying, and He's saying, okay, 
maybe contact your neighbor in in your shop and ask her about this or maybe he tells you oh speak to so and so about that or go and research this stuff that is the holy spirit that is the holy spirit right there write it down and act on it so that you can even hold yourself to expectations so now you know that there is task that the holy spirit has given you so you don't come back there crying and saying lord no don't come there because you 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 know what he has said so even if you want to come there and start repeating prayers bogusly, you will know because you already know that the Holy Spirit told you something. You haven't done it and you want to come back crying. So it doesn't work that way. Take God at his word, but also apply yourself so that you can be a wise master builder. Don't just say it emptily and say, oh, I receive quick understanding. To what end? How? In what area? In what way? These are things you want to know. So you sit with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for making me of quick understanding. But in what area? Then he starts to show you. Boom, 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 boom. And that's how you begin to build. That's how you begin to build. So we're going to pray. And I trust that as we, as we begin to pray these words, the Holy Spirit will tell you more things. If you're on YouTube, you can head back to, uh, to Teams because we're going to take these prayers on Teams. Although I have um stuff here that's written under this general heading of the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him and shall make him of quick understanding this is not going to be all you get we're going to start speaking i don't if you pray in tongues make sure you're praying in your understanding you know with an equivalent duration let me put it that way so i don't want us to come off mute at least so you see i know that sometimes maybe when we tell people like oh pray your understanding maybe you don't want to because it's like oh this is personal or whatever um but please come off mute these words i don't think there's anybody who cannot use opportunity so these are words that you can speak but you see beyond what you are doing here is because you're exercising that channel of the spirit of god you know uh flowing into your mind and and and, and breathing on it you will find that when you live here you will likely have some more and i'm going to ask and if people are willing i might ask you to come off mute and share what else you got but we're going to pray this prayers we're going to speak it so you will find that i will do the same thing because i will speak in tongues then i'm going to you know say this out i'm going to then continue you know i'll be do going in and out in and out like that that's how you do it that's how you prophesy it's not waiting till you fall on the floor and you are screaming no this is how you prophesy over your life so we're going to begin that and I'm going to pause at intervals and I'm going to ask if anybody else got anything else to add into this section, anything else to put down their paper. Don't even worry about sections or not sections. You just take down whatever it is that you hear from God. And I'm telling you that you begin to pray. The idea is we're making these declarations based on scripture. That's the difference. Thank you, Shade, for highlighting that. So powerful. So we're not doing affirmations. These are declarations because where the word of a king is, there is power. So we are making declarations because there's power that backs it. So we're going to begin and I encourage as many of us as are able to, to please come off mute. You need to get used to this. You need to get used to hearing yourself prophesy to yourself. You need to get used to the power that is in your voice, the power that is in your word. Don't let it be strange to your ears. When you hear yourself, that's how you get confident when they tell you to come and pray over people because you've practiced it on yourself and you've built that confidence in what you're saying, knowing that you're not just speaking English. You are speaking words that are charged by power. So I'm going to come off mute. We're going to pray. We're going to start with the first document um, and then we'll move to the next one. And I trust God to give us wisdom as we continue to do this so that you learn to practice this even more in your prayer time. But my goal is that from this point on, if the word of the Lord comes to you, whether by prophecy that comes on this altar or even an emphasis that is shown to you in your dream, you learn how to pray that thing through. Not that you just confess it, move on to the next scripture, confess it, move on to the next chapter, confess it, move on to the next prayer meeting. So we bounce around and we don't get much out of it. It changes from today in Jesus' name. So please, let's come off mute. I hope you can see. If you can't see it, you can probably, you can zoom or if you have the document on your own phone, open it. We're all going to pray together. This is an agreement we are all, you know, uh, 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 participating in that this is in fact our position. We agree as one voice and that this is everyone's reality. So let's come off mute wherever you are if you're not in a noisy place and let's begin to speak these words let's begin to declare these words let's begin to confess these words along the lines of the prophetic word that's come to us as a house those on youtube please navigate back to teams god bless i finished my teaching also if people are interested in praying people can come off mute and pray 
I don't think this is that time where I have to like excite people and you know encourage people to come up Thank you, Father, because your word is true. Sanctify us by your word, increase us by your word. We decree that we are charged and ready to go. We are people that have been prepared for such a time as this. We begin to declare your word, O God. We command the power of God Almighty that every declaration, O God, will come to pass. That your word comes alive, O God. Give us a revelation and an understanding of exactly what it is that you have for us in this season, oh God. I thank you, Father, because personally this is a lot of work that you've been doing with me and how you've been charging up my spirit to step into the place that I need to step into. I stand upon the word of God indeed. This season, oh God, the book of remembrance is before me. Lord, you said I should reason with you, oh God. I should present my case. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 I want us to please Amen. take this exercise again, okay? What I've done is I have put together some declarations. And what I'm saying is that I want us to pray specifically. These are the words on the screen. If you don't have it on, if you are not like able to see the screen, maybe the letters are too small, you can pull up the one you have on your own phone because I sent it to the group. So you can scroll through the group now and look at it. The words on the screen are clear. It says the oppression of the spirit of God that makes for quick understanding is active and powerfully at work in me. Mm. I make sound decisions swiftly because I'm of quick understanding, even in tough matters and seeming mysteries. Every opportunity that comes my way is fully maximized because of the oppression of the spirit of God within me, making me of quick understanding. You have to utter words in line with what God is doing. You have to be willing to build with God. So I'm saying that as we pray this, it's good to pray in tongues. This is not the moment of tongues. So maybe I will pray accordingly and I will pray with you all. If you don't care for the assignment, it's okay though. So you can log off, right? So, but for the few of us who do care, um, I want us to master this. Because I think that many of us have, we've lost this element. We've lost this art, if you will. Because it's been a default posture to run to tongues. We've lost this peace. So we're going to just begin by declaring these words and then let the spirit of God bubble forth from you with more. What is going to happen is when we're done, I'm going to ask if anybody wants to share what else they got that they can add as a line item in this thing. Because this is not the extent of it. This is just a prompt. This is just a, a starter. This is just to kick you off. So I'm saying that let us learn to speak words according to the word of God. Some of us are just going to say stuff and say stuff. I'm saying take the word that God has already said and apply it to your own self. So please then. Um, Let's go back into prayer again and begin to pray and say, Father, I thank you. Like apply it to yourself because the spirit of the Lord is upon me and makes me of quick understanding. So let us open our mouth and let's begin to pray. Take whichever line you want. Just say it to yourself. Pray in tongues. Say it again. Pray in tongues. Get a new statement from God. Say that one. Let's do it together as a house. Father, I thank you for the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord rests upon me. And according to the Lord, because I have been upon the Lord, and 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 I Thank you. I 
you bring up the second one the second one i think is daniel 1 and 17 while victoria is bringing that one up can i ask the house does anyone want to share anything else that the spirit of god you know bubbled up out of them in the lines of this quick understanding because remember i said what you need the the area of understanding that you need like that that thing that god is highlighting or addressing for you as far as this quick understanding is concerned is going to be different for everyone so is there someone here who wants to share something else that the spirit of god highlighted as you know just part of the confessions part of the declarations that must be made um in line with this word is there anyone who wants to share did you receive anything from the holy spirit even as we prayed you can raise your hand just raise your hand let me know if you received anything else okay thank you because like i said thank you very much ricky like i said the goal is not just to take what i've written and like repeat it is just to jump start your system if you will thank you very much deborah thank you so much i appreciate those who are indicating because i really want you to to benefit so much from this this is how i have built this is how i live I case I could sit down, pray for pray like for about a few hours in tongues. Then I take these things and I pour that power straight into these words, as opposed to just saying, "Oh, I receive." This is how I maximize dreams because when I see these things in dreams, I then understand that this is what God is saying to me. So I supposed to sit down and say, "Oh, oh, thank you, Father." I receive. I I begin to build. So I take that thing, I crystallize it in scripture, and then I begin to say it. So we're going to move into the next one now. You may think that this does not matter, this does not pertain to you. But the reality is that even dreams and visions, you should be able to say, yes, I, I, I received them. This is not for the prophets. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 17, it says, And it shall come to pass that I will pour my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. This is what we're doing. It, 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 it's not, this is it. This is the basics. This is the foundation of, of prophecy that's what it is and then it says your young men shall see visions and it says your old men shall dream dreams this is an operation of the outpouring of the spirit, not a gift not a function of an office it's just that because the spirit was poured out on people this is what happens to their lives so when we are talking about visions and dreams don't think oh i'm not called to this i'm not in the that this is your your heritage as a believer so quickly if um uh anybody wants to just share one thing um that you got like Maybe we can even add it to our, our own uh, prayers as well. Any one of you can come off mute, Lasego, Deborah. You can just come off mute and just say what you got. Maybe we can even write it and add it to the things that we are declaring. Praise the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. As we were praying, it always brought up these... Um, Actually, I don't know where exactly it is, but it was what Jesus said about Mary. He said mm. one thing that was when he was rebuking a mother. He mm. said one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that path which shall not be mm. taken away from her. So I was mm. just praying about that thing that I must be doing, so that I, love I don't. I, 
that I have understanding in what I must be doing. That's which is a must. And that was when that scripture just came up. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. You see, this is what I'm talking about. So the area that it matters to you, he begins to highlight it and then you begin to speak along those lines. Oh, Father, thank you because I have quick understanding of what my priorities are. I have quick understanding of where my energy should be expended. I no longer waste my time doing many things and producing nothing because now I have quick understanding that shows me exactly what I need to be doing. And so I produce the results that the Spirit of God expects from my life because I am a good investment of his resources because I no longer waste it. Do you understand what I, this is put words into it the scripture has 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 been released and then you say it so maybe somebody else too this is your own issue as well in that you you need that that help with learning how to focus your energy maybe you also were in that kind of situation like martha where you don't really know should i be doing this one should i be and then now the Holy Spirit is telling you, yes, I make you of quick understanding. He has spoken it. That's it. I'm making you of quick understanding in this area. Now you know what to do part time. No longer will you waste your time. No longer will people confuse you because you know exactly what the Spirit of God is doing in your life in that moment. And you're able to apply yourself to it. So thank you very much for sharing the word. Victoria, please, you've, you've um, taken away our scripture. You've taken away that um, slide. We need to have it, please. If you can share it very quickly, let's move forward. Because I want us to at least cover as much of it as possible. Now, this is a quick run through that we're doing. But when you sit in your quiet time and you pray, you may spend time also interjecting with tongues because you are downloading more. So you may come here like this. And for example, this is how I would probably even pray something like this. I'm still waiting for Victoria's screen to come up so that I can read off of the screen. Victoria, can you help us, please? Um, it's on. It's up, ma'am. Okay, you see? now it's come up. Yeah, now I can see. Okay, so like I was saying, dreams, visions, prophesying, it belongs to everybody. So don't sit there and say because I'm not called to the prophetic. You, it's it's yours. It says I made of I made able to quickly understand and interpret the visions and dreams that the Lord shows me. So no visitation, revelation, or encounter is lost on me. The scriptural basis for that, and remember, we do all this thing based on scripture. That's why this is not affirmations. Is as for me, I have quick understanding in all visions and dreams. This is what was said of Daniel. The Bible said he had understanding. So this is you taking that scripture and applying it to yourself in the context of this word. He said, thank you, Father, because I'm made able to quickly understand and interpret the visions and dreams that the Lord shows me. So no visitation, revelation or encounter is lost on me. I want us to come off mute and pray this because many of us are still dreaming dreams that we don't understand. Many of us don't even have enough dreams because it's like we don't understand the little we have, so we don't get much. So we're going to come off mute. We're going to pray this together. I'm going to pray with us all. And then, you know, whatever else you receive in this segment, you can put it down. Mm -hmm. So let's come off mute. Father, I thank you because as for me, I have quick understanding in all visions and dreams. Yes, Father, I thank you. Because I made it quickly understand that you have quick understanding in all visions and dreams. Thank you. I am made able to quickly understand and interpret the visions and dreams that the Lord shows me. The of God in the name of Jesus. No visitation, no revelation, or encounter is lost on me. I declare. My dream and vision so to be done in the new city because I am now able to understand and ask to interact with the Lord. I am able to understand the Lord. I am able to understand the Lord. I am able to understand the Lord. I 
Amen. Amen. Just a quick show of hands, please. And you you can be honest. You don't have to raise your hand if you don't feel that way. Is anybody feeling especially charged? Like as you as you are praying, are you feeling that that's <laughs> Is that thing rising up within you that is, is, is fueling you with more words? That Are you feeling more powerful? But like, 
is there a, a level of certainty that is being furnished in your mind as you are saying it? Yes, there's yeah. power from praying in tongues, but there's something when you are saying, you are, you are hearing it, and it's like the more you say, the more you hear, the more you want to say it because it, it's. <sighs> I I hope there's somebody else, and again, like I said, you don't have to, uh, you know, agree, but and you don't have to even lie if you don't feel that way. It's okay but there's power now your mind knows what is supposed to happen to you are you understanding what i'm saying your mind knows exactly what is supposed to happen to you so when you see it happening you don't consider it as a fluke you don't consider it as chance so when you're saying i am made of quick understanding in all visions and dreams so even when i hear the dreams of other people i know exactly what they have seen i know what it means and i know what to tell them to do when you see it happening in your life you don't push it away as a strange occurrence you realize that this is exactly what you said and now you are seeing it and you are able to hold it as your own because you spoke it to life many times our minds fight the things that happen around us because we are not aware that they're actually supposed to happen so when it comes it's like an intruder it's like a stranger we're like oh this couldn't be me no when you now see these things you know of course of course it should happen of course this is what should happen so you embrace it and like the bible says to him that has little more shall be given and as the bible says to him that is faithful in that little more will be given so madam b you were the one that raised your hand first so please go on and just say what uh you wanted to share with the Thank house so as we we're praying uh do this free just drop this um proverb 25 to uh, it is the glory of um, God to conceal yes. the and the glory of, of man to search it out. Mm. So the only thing gave me this and said that I have received understanding to yes. search out every yes. dream, every vision that the yes. Lord has given to me. I got that understanding now. Begin to interpret and to search it out. Every deep things that I have been confused about, I begin to receive understanding of it. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Madam B, for sharing. Is anyone blessed here? Do you see how vibrant and alive and active that your prayer time can be? So no longer will you sit down in the prayer and it's like you're counting down because it's like you need to go because you don't even know what you came for. You don't know what you're praying. Now you've prayed for the rent and you are finished praying for the rent and it's like, what else? Listen, prayer is that time that you get from God to build your life. That's it. You sit down there, you build. When you come out, you come out with confidence. And you see what Chade said is that it's not because you now have the exact structure, the whole thing is built. No, it's not because you have already seen the skyscraper, you confess. No, you come out with the confidence knowing that you have laid the first round of blocks. You know that you have put up your the walls. You know the pillars have gone up. So yes, you may not yet be seeing the building, no, but you have that assurance. Nobody can tell you otherwise because you spoke it. Your spirit heard it. Your mind has received it. It has entered inside who you are. It can't be taken from you. God bless you very much, Madam B. Okay, Ricky, if um, because uh, I know you raised your hand the first time too. So if you want to speak very quickly, very quickly, so that we can move to the next one, um, Victoria, if you can bring up the third one. I'm not even sure which one the third one is, but um, let me pull that up. So, Ricky, if you can uh, speak very quickly, and then we'll bring up the third one. Okay, Victoria, the third one is Hebrews 5 and 14. That's the one for the third one. So, can you please bring it up, um, Victoria? Perfect. Okay, Ricky, please come off mute if you can, and just share quickly with the house. Ricky, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Okay, Ricky, we'll probably come back to you because we're at, we're at time. It's literally past three o'clock. So I want us to go through this third one together. Um, and this is the last one we'll do, you know, before we disperse. But I'm hoping that we can actually continue to do this more regularly as a practice in this house. And it will just be our time of coming together. Maybe after we've even mounted up and built spiritual power, we just take that avalanche of power and pour it into these declarations and pour it into these words and watch god do strange things in your life okay so this is the third one it says but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern that is to be of quick understanding of both good and evil so when you read this scripture it's telling you that there are a few things you should be aware of 
Number one is that the time that I spend in prayer exercises my spirit and it stirs up this stream of quick understanding in me. And so the Lord begins to commit strong meat to me. What is that thing that feels like strong meat? Is it revelations? Is it words of knowledge? Is it insight into your family issues? Is it ability to, 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 to um, operate in the, in the stream of deliverance? This is strong meat. It says the Lord will Will, will, will give them strong meat. He will commit strong meat to them. So this is your confession that the time I spend in prayer, it does not go to waste. It exercises my spirit, stirs up the stream of quick understanding. And so the Lord begins to commit strong meat to me. You will speak that deeper encounters. So some of us will sit down and hear people saying that they went to heaven. They didn't lock anybody out. They didn't. So when you, when you pray this prayer, this is what you're at. Maybe you don't, you don't want to go and that's okay. You don't have to please. What is that thing that's the deeper encounter for you? Is it that, you know, you're able to then hear the articles, the, the exact details of your destiny? This is what it is. Is it that you've been having a lot of signs and maybe you don't really understand them? This is where you begin to pray. That I begin to have these encounters and visitations that distill them because they are strong meat. Let's go on and begin to speak. Speak as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. Thank you, Jesus, because the time that I spend in prayer exercises my spirit. I do not walk around with a weak spirit because the spirit of a man is that which sustains his infirmities. Thank you, Father, because my time in prayer is not wasted. It exercises my spirit and it stirs up the stream of quick understanding So because I'm a person who stays in prayer consistently, who has a prayer Altar, a consistent prayer altar and so this the stream Lord of quick understanding is always on it is to always to me. on I, for me the time it does not go on it does not hibernate I am ready for quick understanding when I wake up in the morning I am ready for quick understanding when I am at work in the afternoon I am ready for quick understanding when I am making food for my kids he begins to give me a strong meat to me he begins to give me encounters he begins to give me a strong the time I spend in prayer exercises my spirit the Lord begins to Open up my mind, my spirit, is under the so I have a strong meat in the name of so the Lord. Begins to I did begin, the Lord begins to download me. To me. things that are hidden the in the foundation of my family. I begin to speak in the name of Jesus. I understand what he's saying. The Lord speaks to me and encounters and visitations from God. And now, my experience, I declare and declare deeper encounters and visitations from God. Thank you, Father, because I have in a I I to get strategies on the way to go. I begin to get strategies on how to engage in life. I begin to get strategies on how my relationships. I begin to get strategies about my family. I begin to get strategies with the spirit of God. Thank you, Father, to 
Amen. Thank you. Amen. So very quickly, anyone else want to share, you know, additional things that came up in their spirit as, you know, they were speaking these words and their understanding was participating in this. Okay, Madam B. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this session is for you. Oh, Aromina. Okay, Madam B, let's Thank take Aromina, right? Since we took you for the last one. So we'll take Aromina first. Okay, Aromina, please, can you come off mute and speak? Thank you, Mama. As we're praying, God just laid it in my heart. The scripture, they that wait upon the Lord. Mm. Isaiah 45, 41. Mm. The day that mm. wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, mm -hmm. and that we shall mount up wings as eagles. The eagle is mm. like the, the most expensive bird, and mm. it, it flies the highest. So that was just what is in my spirit, that, okay, because you are waiting upon the Lord, you are not mm. going to fly higher than your peers. You are yes. going to run and not be weary you're going to walk and we're not faint which means he's giving us more more responsibilities in this time we're not yes. going to be tired he is going to he's just going to use our capacity and tenacity to keep waiting yes. on him that's what i got yes. Thank you so much. You know what's interesting is that's actually the next slide that was here. So you see the spirit, you see what I'm saying that you, you you'll be thinking, oh, is this elaborate thing? No. It's the spirit of God quickening things inside your mind. It's the spirit of God quickening things inside of you. So what we have here on that next slide, um, and we're not going to take it today because we need to wrap up the meeting and I want to make sure we can take um, what Madam B and uh, Rike want to say. You know, what we have here is uh, Isaiah 40, 31, right? It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. And so what I had outlined there was that from this season, from this point, I dwell in and operate from a realm called quick understanding. And so because of that, I make advancement in life at the pace of the eagle's flight. I make advancement in life at the pace of the ego. So no more am I dragging behind. No more am I running, going through life sluggishly. You see, the Bible says there are those that are walking. There are those that are running. That's the next thing. I say, I do not just walk or run through life. Supernatural speed for flight is added to all my endeavors such that the investment of the spirit in my life produces a hundredfold return. Are you with me? This is how you build. This is how you... When Paul talks about being a wise master builder, he knows what he's saying. He knows what he's saying. So it's just funny that Ravina had, you know, picked that and it's actually here. So you begin to speak that because you are of quick understanding, you move through life at the pace of the eagle's flight. No longer are you just walking. No longer are you just running. Some of us may even need to say it because it's like we feel like we've been crawling through life. So when God says he's making you of quick understanding, your voice needs to be loud when you're making this declaration and say, yes, I no longer crawl through life. I no longer drag along through life sluggish as though I just came to escort someone. I move at the pace of the flight of the eagle because of quick understanding that is activated within me, that operates within me. I move at that point because the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. This is what will happen to them. So now the oppression of quick understanding is at work within you and you begin to move. You make decisions fast. You're not just a walker. You're not just a crawler. You are flying through life. People are looking and it's like you just go boom, past them. That is what you declare because that's what the word of the Lord has said. Thank you very much, Arimina, for sharing that. Um, let's take Madam B um, before we round up today. Thank you, Ma. So the streets of God took me to Samuel. Mm. And the prayer of Samuel, when God first called him, that he never had that understanding. The uh -huh. first time, the second time. Then when that understanding came, he realized that mm. this is God. So that time, he was able to stand between God and mm. his... And yes. his no one knows when God talks to him. He can get word from God, get understanding of yes. it, and run with mm. it. So he grew to the point that God no longer even speaks to Eli, but just go straight to Samuel and even yeah. send Samuel messages. 
So that is dropping this understanding. And now we are we are eating that the, the strong meat, and mm. we are moving high, stepping mm. higher from being a baby Christian. We have moved up. Yes. That we don't need to do to anybody. We can sit down. We can pray. Yes. We can receive. I love this. We can get the of God, revelations and get yes. understanding directly from mm. God. Yes, this is powerful because for someone, this is what quick understanding means for you. No longer do I have to wait till my pastor, you know, or a prophet or someone comes to speak to me. I am not able to handle strong me. So the Lord speaks to me directly. He shows me what he needs to tell me directly. I hear his voice. You understand? I love that example that she gave. Like Samuel, in the beginning, he couldn't tell. Then later he could tell. And the Bible says none of his words fell to the ground. That is a man who is of quick understanding. Do you know how quick his understanding had to be so that he did not mistakenly anoint the wrong person in Jesse's house? This is, this is in fact, Madame B, you will draft uh, the one that we will add to this, this day because we don't have it here and we need to put it there. That is quick understanding. So I'm looking at, you know, the other sons and I'm thinking, oh, wonderful. This must be the one. But then I, I just know, I just, I, quick understanding. No, 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 no. It's not this one. It's not this one. That's quick understanding, but he grew. So when you, when you speak like that, you speak, you know, from that perspective and say, thank you, Lord. I'm a quick understanding. So I no longer need someone to tell me what God is. I no longer need to depend on someone. We're not an island, right? You will always be able to benefit from what other people are telling you from the Lord, but I'm no longer at the mercy. Let me put it that way. That is, I can't advance. I can't proceed. I can't do anything until someone comes to explain or tell me what, you know, God is doing. Like the Ethiopian, you know, that said, do you understand what you are reading? I say, how can I accept a man tells me, except a man explains it to me. You are not there anymore. Strong meat can be committed to you because now you understand. This is how you pray. This is how you build. I hope we have all been blessed today. If we have enjoyed this session, <clears throat> And we actually want more of these kinds of sessions. Can I please get feedback from the house in the comments with the emojis, all of that? Can I please get feedback from the house? I want us to be such a powerful house of prayer that, you know, whether you want us to be praying in tongues, we are there. If you need us to pray now, understanding what there, it's not that we just, all we can come and do is just speak and speak and speak because we want to just throw the responsibility on the spirit of God that you go and do it. No, we know how to build with God. We know how to hear what he's saying. Thank you so much. Shade, I don't know if you are still on the line. I know you had opened the meeting and, um, oh, Shade is on hold. So I think we will go on and close the meeting for today. But please keep in mind, from time to time, we will incorporate this. When the word of the Lord comes to us, especially when we have it like at the beginning of the month or something like that, this is how we want to start building around it so that we're not just walking and say, ah, well, Madam Amy said that this is my month of station. No, you are ensuring that that visitation happens because you are speaking. You are saying exactly what the Holy Spirit wants you to say. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for this time of fellowship. Father, I thank you for furnishing understanding in the minds of people. Father, I thank you for, for causing their minds to be a fertile space for the word of the Lord to land, for the word of the Lord to blossom, for the word of the Lord to yield a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because each and every one of us, we will not miss out on what you are doing. Thank you, Father, because you have let us know that although that you have declared this a month of visitation, there is an aspect that must be in place so that we maximize it which is this quick understanding. And so I thank you, Father, because you have made each and every one of us on this altar of quick understanding. No longer do we miss our seasons. No longer do we miss our visitations. We maximize every opportunity. We maximize every visitation, every encounter, everything it is that you are doing. Thank you because we no longer crawl through life. We don't walk through life. We don't stagger through life. We move through life at the flight, at the pace of the flight of eagles. Thank you, Jesus, because the operation of quick understanding Standing is activated within us it's at work in us it is always on it does not hibernate it doesn't shut down it doesn't go on standby it is always on and so when we come up on situations this operation quickly goes to work seamlessly to bring us into your will to bring us into your purpose to bring us into understanding of what we must know and do per time thank you father for in jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen.
God bless you Amen. all. Thank you so much for participating in the session. I told you I said I didn't know how people would, you know, receive or whatever, but thank you so much for participating. God bless you and I pray that indeed your month of visitation is exactly as God has ordained it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Bye everyone and we will see same place. Yes. <laughs> same time next week. God bless you.